Hello, welcome everybody for the, our uh, SIG release, uh, Kubernetes SIG release maintainer track talk. Uh, my name is Carlos, uh, and uh, I'm going to let our, my other colleagues to introduce themselves. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Sasha, one of the co chairs of SIG release. So it's the first time that I had the opportunity to be at a KubeCon uh, in person since 2019. So, and I'm here with Jeremy. Jeremy, uh, also the first time since 2019 to be here in person. Super excited to be here and share what we're doing in SIG Release. Yeah, and my name is Adolfo Garcia. I am one of the tech leads for Release Engineering with uh, Kubernetes SIG Release. Excited to be here. and also what we <laughs> um, will do in the next couple of months. So after that, we will speak about how we turn source code into artifacts, so how we actually build the release and which user personas are involved into that. And then uh, when we have those artifacts, we will speak about how we can trust them or even if we can trust those artifacts and how end users can verify this trust. Then we will speak about how we can on the infrastructure, so what it means to have a community-owned infrastructure, and also what we plan for the future. And last but not least, we will speak about how to get involved in SIG release and how to help us on our efforts. So Jeremy, tell us what's new in SIG release. So, uh, KubeCon, over the last year, um, the Kubernetes 125 release came out. There were more than 40 enhancements. Uh, as we've seen over the last few releases, things just keep getting bigger and bigger. Too many things to call out, but there's some interesting things, I think, in 125. One, uh, the default registry location has changed from kates.gcr.io to registry.kates.io. Everybody should use that when they're pulling images now. Uh, it's going to help us with infrastructure costs and uh, just the maintenance of the project going forward. Uh, QProxy is also distro list now, which is really cool. Uh, that came out on the 23rd of August, 2022, so it was a little bit after KubeCon. Um, currently, next slide. We are in the middle of the 126 release. Uh, so we just keep going. Uh, this is gonna come out on December 6th, hopefully, uh, with no problems coming down the pipe. Um, the, the lead for this one is Leo, and the Emeritus Advisor is Nabaroon. And I think this is super cool. Uh, this is the first release that's been entirely led from outside of North America. The release lead and the Emeritus Advisor. Um, you can kind of see, like, we've had this really great uh, international presence. Um, Lots and lots of countries highlighted here over the last few years. But until now, we have never had a release that was entirely led outside of the US. So I think that's really a, a cool milestone for us. Um, this year, we've also been focusing on a few things in our roadmap. Uh, when you get these slides, you can also find the roadmap um, on GitHub. Uh, and we're really focusing on three areas. We want to make releases more consumable, easy to, easier to pull down, easier to get the artifacts for them. Um, more introspectable, so you can come out and understand what's happening, what's in each release, uh, and then also more secure. We want to make sure that the artifacts that you're getting are non-falsifiable. We want to make sure that they have signatures, they have software build materials, and all of those things so you have a better understanding and a, little, and a, a better way to, to judge the risk of consuming those, those artifacts and knowing what you're deploying. What? Uh, on the introspectable side, um, we, we wanted to look at the, the cadence uh, and, and kind of follow up on our change. Uh, obviously, we used to do four releases a year. Uh, we've moved to three. We wanted to know how folks felt about this. So some, some data that we gathered, uh, most folks seem to strongly prefer three releases a year. How many people here miss four releases? Absolutely nobody. Who, who deploys Kubernetes and is like really happy that there are less things to keep up with? Um, I know I did uh, in my last job. Next slide. Uh, going back to registry.case.io, um, there's a lot of work going on with Sig Kate's infra to move away from uh, that original GCR instance. Um, this is all a lot of um, work to bring community-owned infrastructure into play, uh, but also to, to, to really work on distributing costs. Um, there's an insane budget for Kubernetes infrastructure, and we spend a lot of it hosting container images. 
there's work being done right now to spread the load a lot. So if you're coming from Amazon, you're gonna start pulling images from S3. Uh, it's gonna go through a really transparent proxy, a lot of great information you can find in that tab. And last one. We're gonna turn source code into artifacts now. So Sasha's gonna take over and tell us how we do that. Yeah, all right, so the first thing, that's not, uh, it's just this one. So the first thing we would like to outline is what is necessary to actually cut a release. But uh, the first thing really is that we have need some personas who actually do the release cut. And uh, we use, uh, we have two approaches here. So the first one is that we have an actual release cycle, which uh, goes around about uh, three to four months. And we tend to release three times per year. And then we also have the patch releases, which, uh, which have the yearly support period. And we also um, cut patch releases mostly every month and every second week of the month is the, main is the main goal. So we actually need someone who takes over the responsibility for cutting a release, right? So uh, we also have to um, need persons who have the time, the right time and the dedication and also are encouraged to do the manual steps for the documentation and verification of the actual release. So this can take up to multiple hours per release and also release managers tend to go um, to release multiple patch releases in parallel, for example. So what, who do we have on board? So the first role is that the branch managers uh, and their shadows and those folks get selected per each release cycle. And this is a highly privileged role because they have full access to the main Kubernetes repository and they also have to not only cut the releases but they also have to pre-plan uh, the releases like the alpha, the beta and the release candidates. And this should be done together with the release team leads. Um, and they also have to coordinate between other, uh, other parts of the release. Like for example, if they have to coordinate the release bef uh, before it's actually being cut with CI signal that, they, that we can ensure that the CI, for example, is green. And on the other side, we have the release managers and the release manager associates. And those role um, is a more permanent role in the release engineering subproject. And they also coordinate between cutting patch releases, right? So we just have to um, announce that we, when we do the next upcoming patch releases, we also have to take care of uh, defining when a release goes end of life and things like that. They also have to maintain the release branches, which means that they have to review the cherry picks um, if they got approved correctly and if we don't sneak a feature in, for example, into a release. Other than that, they also um, actively develop features and maintain our code, which gets larger and larger over time, so this is also a very ongoing topic for us. They also work closely together uh, with the security response committee. So if we have any security vulnerability coming up in Kubernetes, then we have to, yeah, maybe schedule out of band releases or things like that. And that's also part of their job. And the release managers uh, on top of that also mentor our release manager associates group. So which steps are involved to cut a release? So the first thing we have to do is that we have to create a GitHub issue, um, which is our foundation for documenting how releases will, will be cut. So it contains all information we need to actually build the release and cut the release. Um, it links any blockers or follow up work and also uh, it references uh, under which conditions, for example, the CI signal has, has been the release cut. So failing tests and outlines, things like that. It also lists which Google Cloud build jobs run um, so that we can just uh, see if we have any build issues or things like that. And we also create, a, after that, we can just create a corresponding Slack thread to track the release just, just in time. After that, we also require some help from the Google build, build admins and have to check for their availability because they help us to build, push, and sign Debian and RPM-based packages on app Kates.io and yum Kates.io. And if we have been done all of that, then we can actually stage a release. And I think it's the first time that we uh, now will do a real world release stage live at the KubeCon, and Carlos can help me with that. So what we do now, we use our uh, CREL release toolbox, um, and Carlos will just run CREL stage. Usually we would have to define uh, which type of release we wanna cut, so it, it's an alpha, beta, or a release candidate and also uh, from which branch we want to cut the release. But per default, everything should go well now, or not. Well. Yeah, Carlos has to authenticate against the repository again. Sorry about the live demo. Yeah, 
there. So we can see that we already uh, gather some pre, uh, some information. If you go a little bit more up into the logs, then we can see that we already find out which version we want to cut. So there are some um, automated things. For example, we also have the, uh, the cube cost version and things like that. So those are all variables which have influence on the release cut and we can define them or change them um, like we want. But of course now there is a link to the uh, Google Cloud build console there and this brings us to the release. And usually nobody uh, other than the release managers or their associates can see those logs. And you probably have to just refresh this yes. because it's queued, yeah. So we will not wait for the release to be finished now. But if you look at the, at the execution details, then you can see, yeah, then you can see uh, that the cloud build variables have been set successfully. So we have to, we have created this job, this runs on a virtual machine ma mainly, and the logs should now just print out anything like we, what we have to do for cross stage. Yeah. So it pulls container images, starts building the release and things like that. So if we go back to the slides, then we can see, yeah. Then I created an overview about what Credit Stage actually does. So it runs this predefined Google Cloud build shop and it also checks the prerequisites for the, for the actual release. So the, for example, determining the release version and the text in the repository is kind of tricky because um, we have to find out which release we want to cut. So we could also imagine that we want to create a release branch or not a release branch, something like this. Then it actually builds the release. So it creates the uh, binary artifacts and container images and it also uh, generates the build of materials, which is kind of new to us. Then we also verify those build artifacts. For example, we double check if the architecture has been set correctly. And uh, we also build the provenance attestation for this build step. And after that, we just stage everything we have been built into a Google Cloud build bucket and leave it there. Um, because now release managers have to actually um, publish the release and for that we have CREL release and this build version uh, is the unique reference to an actual release uh, which then just will be released and pushed into the actual locations. So what does CREL release do? It verifies the artifact provenance for CREL stage. It also pushes the artifacts into their final destination like um, container registries or Google Cloud buckets for binary artifacts and it also pushes the staged Git object, objects, for example. So we use the Kubernetes repository, to, for example, to then we generate a change log that we committed to the repository and on CREL release, we will actually push those Git changes to, yeah, to KK. Then we also create a release announcement, which is just a, a plain text file and update GitHub release, for example. Then we build a provenance attestation for CREL release. And after that, we archive the release on our Google Cloud bucket. So if everything then goes well, then we can do the same again, but now in production mode. And if that's successful, production mode mainly means that we just use different locations for container images and uh, binary artifacts. And if that's successful, then we can do the image promotion after CREL stage. And for that, we have a different set of tools like KPromo, our, uh, part of our promo tools, which is able to uh, create a GitHub pull request to a repository um, which outlines which container images we want to pro, uh, promote to production. And if this pull request got merged, then uh, this, the job running after this pull request will actually push the container images from the um, state bucket to the production bucket, and then those container images are live. And if this is done, then we can also run CREL release in production mode. And that's now the point in time where we need the help from the Google Cloud Build admin to cut the dev and RPM packages for us. So those are, uh, they will use the pre-built binary artifacts to create uh, packages for it. And then we can also notify Slack that our release is now finally done. The announcement we previously created can, be then, can then be used to uh, push the announcement to the official Kubernetes uh, mailing lists. And we have a dedicated subcomment, for example, for that. So CREL is just a toolbox of uh, use cases we fulfill. You can just use CREL announce and then it announces the release. But what's inside of a release? So we have binary artifacts for the Kubernetes client and servers and also for the test binaries, which is useful for uh, integration testing and for every supported platform. So we build for a huge 
uh, I think it's f five or six different supported platforms we have right now. And we also do the same for, the, for container images, which basically reuse the, uh, the binary artifacts. And those container images are signed, which is new right now. And we are also working on uh, getting the binary artifacts signed. Then we also have the uh, salsa provenance metadata for the stage and release steps. So those should be part of the release to actually verify what has been done in Cradle stage and release. And also an updated, the updated Kubernetes repository is part of the release as well, as well as the staged sources. And then we also have the software bill of materials for all of that. But how can we trust those artifacts? Everybody can talk. So as Sasha mentioned, when we do the release process, we stage things and we produce a set of images, a set of binaries, things that land uh, in the staging environment. We want to promote those things to the production um, places that they're going to go to. Uh, or, sorry, we sign them also. So we publish the images and, sta and signatures to a staging GCR. Those are going to be the, pl you know, the places where we can kind of verify things and where they live until they go into production regions. Then, uh, as Sasha mentioned, we do a pull request uh, that's generated by kpromo that's going to list out all of the images that are going to come across. So the things that need to be promoted from the staging environment to a real release are enumerated in that pull request. So the first stage of trust that you get here is really that we've got a small set of people that are able to generate these releases. There are a trusted set of folks in the community. And then they're reviewing or generating a PR to do a review of what's going to be promoted into the release environment. Then other release managers, so again, the trusted subset of folks, but not the person doing the release themselves, is going to review that pull request to make sure that the things we're bringing across uh, look good and that we're going to bring you know, things that are, are going to be valid and trustworthy inside of the, um, the project. Once that merges, we kick off some automation to do that actual promotion process. Uh, that's going to take the images from that staging GCR, and it's going to put them into the production GCR. And before, that was kind of where things stopped. But now, we also, since we are signing those images, we're able to verify all the signatures before we copy them across. So we get that extra level of kind of um, verifiability as, as part of the process. So you get that two-phase kind of uh, security guarantee that these images are the things that the release team uh, has, has built and is ready to consume. Then finally, those things are pushed to the production GCR and again signed um, with the production uh, service account. So you're able to verify all of those things and see the, the, ch the kind of the chain of custody. You'll see the signatures from the staging environment and then you'll also see the signatures from the actual production push. All right, Adolfo, do you want to tell us about how end users can verify these things? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, once we sign the images, they get, uh, they get their signatures attached in the container registry. So uh, the way you can do the verification is uh, by using the cosign tool from Sixor. And you, it, the command is really easy. You just have to run cosine verify and pass it back of the image. And that should get you an actual uh, verification of the image. Uh, once you verify them, if you inspect the signature that's uh, spread out from cosine, you see uh, those two signatures attached to the images that uh, Jeremy was just talking about. You see the, the one signature done by our uh, staging account. That means it, uh, that tells you that the image was actually uh, release by SQL release and uh, release manager. And then you'll see the second signature which all of the images across the Kubernetes project get. Um, then, uh, do you want to continue? Yep. All right. Uh, and then the other one is uh, we, we attach, well, we release, we are not attaching currently the SVOM to the images. Uh, there's some work that has to be done yet in the image promoter to, to enable us to do that. Uh, but we do also do uh, uh, release a, a complete SVOM with all of the uh, with all of the um, uh, with all the images, and uh, we have a tool um, that was derived from all the work we did to get this, the Kubernetes SVOM going, uh, called Bomb, which you can download and use it to generate um, an SVOM of uh, your Go project if you want. Um, 
this is uh, if you run, uh, if you inspect the yes bomb uh, of an image, you can see inside of the bomb allows you to inspect the image um, and see how, the, how it is. It, it allows you to look inside of the SBOM and see the structure of the SBOM, all of the components inside of it. And, uh, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, we mentioned about like having the, our own infrastructure and what that means actually. In the past, everything was uh, managed by the Googlers in the Google GCP project. And uh, in the past years, we start moving back to a community uh, one at one. And what we have right now in the community side one, we have all the containers, we have all the binaries and the, the S bonds and provenance in a GCS bucket in the registry. Uh, as Sasha and Jeremy mentioned, like when we cut a release, all those uh, things goes to the community bucket and the community registry. But there is one uh, piece that is still on the Google owned infrastructure, which is are the Debian and RPM package. Uh, after we, like in the last mile of the release, when everything is almost ready, we need some uh, support from the Googlers to build and uh, publish the package for us. And then they build, sign, and push, and those parts are ready. And, and this uh, Debian and RPM packages is now like we are working to move away from the Google on it part to be like a community one as well. Then there's a current uh, POC in progress for how we can build uh, using open open build services, and uh, and we are working like to remove this as soon as possible from the from the Google and to be a community one. If you want like to to uh, participate and help to work on this, you can join the the Slack channel as well. So uh, the next step. So. Obviously, as Sasha was mentioned, we have a team of release managers, uh, but we'd like to, so we would like to invest our time in making the life of these release managers as painful, as painless as possible. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, there's uh, always, always, always a ton of work to do. And if you'd like to join SIG release, we are more than welcome. So uh, this is a brief overview of the efforts that we have going on and how they align with our roadmap. So, um, as Carlos said, we are working on assigning the release artifacts that, that uh, uh, that's the, the release, uh, the system packages. Uh, we also are uh, in the middle of uh, moving and trying to imagine that POC and trying to find the shape of it, the final shape of it. Um, we are also uh, trying to come up with new ways of reimagining how the image promotion should be. Uh, this mainly because of the new infrastructure requirements that we have uh, because of the, of the infra changes that are happening from moving from Google owned things to seek release and community managed infra. So we, we are trying to optimize how the process runs, but also maybe coming up with new ideas on how to make that process more, more, uh, more seamless. Uh, then uh, we are trying to come up with uh, like tiers of recommendations of how to handle first the our internal repository. So we have like huge repositories that we release like Kubernetes. Then we have middle tier ones, and then we have the smaller, which sometimes are just a library. Uh, so we're trying to set the guidelines on how we should handle and try to, to, to how we should uh, build the releases for those. They, why are we trying to do that? Because we want to one first our lives easier, but also we'd like to be a little bit more of a guiding light for the, the smaller projects across the org that maybe if some of the tooling that we are releasing can help them. And, and this is why one of the things that we are about to, to release for in the next uh, few months and before the next uh, cycle ends is a new GitHub Actions repo capturing the tooling that we are building inside of SIG release so that anybody can consume them inside of their actions uh, workflows more easily. Um, now, uh, we are also working on uh, improving some of the way that provenance metadata is in built inside uh, our release process. Currently, we are building metadata in the wrong places, uh, but we'll have a new utility out that will, en it will enable us to query the build from the outside, try to observe it and collect the necessary information 
from a safer point of view. And this, of course, is in the aiming to finish our, our salsa uh, cap that we have still going. Um, then, uh, ah, another one. Uh, one uh, another one that we want to do is start creating attestations from the image promotion process. So we have, you can verify the signatures, but we want to also let you know what happened there and who did it. And um, we, as Sasha mentioned earlier, we are working on, on signing for the rest of the artifacts. So there's an effort going down to sign uh, binaries, the s bonds and the provenance metadata. That one is already done, but uh, it still needs to be put into production. Um, Salsa is undergoing a few changes, so the framework is uh, getting uh, split to be, uh, make it easier for organizations to, uh, to achieve compliance. So we need to rework the cap once 1.0 merges, so to make it more aligned to that. Um, we, uh, we need to build, uh, we have a utility called publish uh, release, which should verify the, the artifact is, uh, is publishing. And uh, we are working uh, together with what used to be the SPDX uh, official SBOM generator to uh, bring multi-language support to BOM. BOM, our, our uh, bill of materials tool, currently works with Go project, but we have organized uh, uh, with uh, a couple of other SBOM projects to create one single repository of language parsers so that we can extract uh, language dependencies in the same way in all of them, and that, that like, multi-language support is coming to one. So there's uh, like about 10 languages, Python, Ruby, Rust, the usual, uh, the usual suspects are there. And finally, uh, one thing that I'm really happy to announce is uh, all of that work that we are putting, air, uh, putting into the Kubernetes releases, we always try to get it out and expose it as publicly and general purpose libraries and tools. And, uh, and, but we, until now, we didn't have like a, a clear story of why those feeds are important and how to use them and how do they piece together. So together with the actions repo that uh, we are building, uh, we are also publishing a, a SIG release guide to how to secure your release. And basically this is take all of our tools, uh, play, make them play well together, and you'll improve your, your release uh, security instance quite a bit. Um, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, my plan is to publish uh, the earlier draft so that other people can come in and comment on the document. Uh, so if you're interested in that, hang out in SIG release and the SIG release channel on Kubernetes and uh, we can uh, chat about the document and you can uh, add your suggestions to it. Thank you. All right, now we want to speak about how to get involved and how to help us with uh, all of those efforts. Um, the first thing we really would like to recommend you is to uh, apply for a release team shadowing uh, experience for the 127 cycle. It should happen this year, maybe in December, so there should be an announcement on KDEV. And if you want to get to know which roles are already existing, then we linked it here as well. So, for example, you have technical roles like uh, CI signal or also the release notes. Um, team is also kind of a technical um, team, but uh, we also have non-technical um, roles, for example, like comms or docs and um, others. So if, you really, if you're really interested in one particular area for, of the whole release, then the release team shadowing program is the best way to get started with Kubernetes and also provides you a good way to uh, maintain an overview about the project at all and what is going on because you uh, indirectly get the knowledge from the others as well. So, but if you are interested in even more technical aspects of a release, then this can be uh, done by just showing more, uh, then be, by becoming a release manager associate, for example. So you can show in the release team and then also later shadow for a more technical role and then you can just uh, express your interest that, that you want to be a release manager associate. So it, this also means that you can start contributing to our repositories, getting involved into our discussions, as I've also already mentioned, um, and staying just up to date in release management or the SIG release Slack channel. Um, it's also, we also have a huge bunch of recurring work, like um, updating Golang versions or keeping dependencies, other dependencies up to date. We also have a bunch of uh, work which is related to releases. For example, if a new CNI release got published, then we have to update the manifest for the, for the packages which use it and things like that. So there's a 
uh, amount of recurring work where everyone is, uh, can express their interest and start contributing to it as well. And for sure, last but not least, it is always encouraged to uh, connect to existing release managers to find more areas to contribute. And yeah, with that, I would like to say that, it, that we are always happy to help. So the from my point of view, the release team shadowing program is the best onboarding experience in the community. Um, I started with that as well. And um, SIG release is always welcoming to discuss any process or technical changes into any direction. So we have a lot of, um, for example, we have a, um, a retrospective for each release, which is uh, split into two retrospectives for now, and where you can, in the mid-cycle retrospective, already express that you maybe think that something should be changed. And that's always a good thing. So we totally welcome this change. And our overall goal is to be most inclusive as possible, just to lower the barrier for, for new and also for existing contributors. So we are always looking for new contributors and we really would be really cool if we uh, achieved that at this KubeCon. And with that, I would like to thank, thank you for listening to our talk. And yeah, we are now open for questions, right? Or do we have any time left? Yeah. No, uh, no, actually, no, uh, we have quite a big in investment in the way we have doing, we have been doing in, uh, in Cloud Build. So for now, it's gonna stay there mostly because, I mean, even if we were to consider a change to move things into, to a change to move th things into, into sections, uh, we are spread thinly, thin, thin as it is. So if, uh, so the, the main bottleneck that, that there would be uh, people. So it could be done. I'm not sure if we would gain a lot from it uh, because of we've built tooling around GCB to, to make all of this, uh, this happen. So uh, since we don't have enough people, we cannot think of a change like that. Like a train out there. <laughs> yeah. There is a lot of automation already. Uh, there are just a lot of pieces. Uh, some of it requires manual review, like waiting for PR reviews to get the image promotion PR merged. Some of it takes time to get uh, Google people to, to do that last step of the mile. Um, we're working on fixing that part, but right now that's a pretty manual process for them. So there's just coordination that happens, um, but there is a lot of automation already. The, the tooling um, that's built for Krell, for the actual image promotion process, a lot of that is automation. Um, and it just kind of comes down to the the scope of how many things we're building, how many places we have to push that to now, and, and really just kind of overseeing that process. The, uh, on the release team side, there is a lot of work too. Um, if, if you went to the keynote this morning, uh, I think Priyanka mentioned, she talked to Taylor, one of the previous release leads, about how much time he spent doing things. And a lot of that is people. It's working with different SIGs to coordinate which caps are gonna land, make sure that PRs are merged. Things are kind of disjoint too, so there's, there's just that kind of 
getting people to the right place. Um, that's a lot of the work that goes into the. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so yeah, as Jeremy was saying, stick release is really split into two. So there's a, the release engineering stop project and the release team. And we try to, and in the release team, we put all of our efforts into automation and building the tooling and all of that. But there's also the human parts of the release that cannot be automated, like writing blog posts, like uh, engaging, uh, ensuring that people get their enhancements at time and all of that. So even even if we if we were to automate fully the release engineering part, the, the human part is not. But it's also one of the most rewarding because that, that's where you get to know all the community members, allow people, help them grow. So it's the, that's the best part of the, of the of SIG release to me, in, in my opinion, at least. I think on the release team side, though, there are, there are opportunities to improve and make some automation happen. And Grace and some other folks working on enhancements have done a fantastic job spinning up this new um, GitHub board. So we're using the, the new GitHub projects beta to really s streamline and make the whole process of tracking enhancements easier. Uh, before, it was a Google Sheet that had the most complex automation I've ever seen. Uh, to, to really track things. You know, things are in, in the KK repo, things are in the K enhancements repo, and you've got to, the docs repo, the website repo, you've got to like keep all of these things in, in line. Um, and before it was a sheet, it was mostly automated through crazy scripts, and then somebody on the release team going through and entering data, or somebody from the SIG going through and entering data. And it was uh, not super sustainable, um, and it's, it's so much better now. versatile in the sense of can it be reused? Yes, I mean, does it have any specific features? Well, in theory, you could spin it up and use it for your own, okay. uh, as long as you are running on either GCR or artifact registry. This is uh, the technical reason behind that is that it does some specific, Google-specific calls to the, uh, to the registry uh, in order to list how the images are there. I've been trying to get it to work with others, and it's, uh, well, if you take a look, you'll understand. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's not easy, but if you were running in that setup, you could use it for your own organizations, and that means you can get, like, a, a pull request and free signing uh, with Victor. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and if, if you want to enhance it to make it more vessel, at least. I mean, you use it as inspiration, too, which is, like, you know, it's the way that it works is a, is a pretty good model, I think. Um, you could build your own for whatever environment you're in, take inspiration from the code that's there. Yeah. 